Okay, thank you everyone for tuning in. Uh, my name is Christian Sorensen. I'm the Deputy Committeeman for the Democratic Party of Evanston. Um, tonight we have Ms. Patricia Gregory running for the special election in Ward 2. Um, the, the Democratic Party of Evanston is hosting these videos because we are having an endorsement vote uh, from February 19th to February 26th. It will be online. Uh, these videos will be accessible. And then after uh, the 26th, we will be finding a place to have just a small get together. Anyone that's interested, um, you know, no, no official speeches or anything like that, but just a nice mixer for everybody that is dedicated, involved, and passionate about municipal elections. So, uh, Patricia, how would you like me to, to refer to you tonight? Pat, Ms. Gregory, what would be the, the, the appropriate way? Pat or Patricia, it doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. All right, Patricia, please please feel free to take 90 seconds to introduce yourself to uh, Democratic Party of Evanston members. Okay. Well, my name is Patricia Gregory. I'm a teacher over at Lincoln Elementary School. Um, I grew up in the Fifth Ward. I was, um, I was born at Community Hospital, which is no longer there. I saw the whole Fifth Ward kind of being dismantled with, you know, we had, there was a grocery store on Emerson and Dodge that we went to all the time. Uh, Mr. Griffin's store. And then up on Church near Church and Dodge, we had uh, a record shop. And then across on Church Street, there was another record shop. We had Sinclair Gas Station right there on Darrow and Church Street. There were so many things. And you had Cheeks Dental um, place up there on, I think it was Church and Darrow. So there was a lot going on up there. You had C&W Barbecue, which was good. And then Right down on Foster Street, you had um, Miss Fry. She had a daycare there. So it was a lot going on in, in, in the area. And so um, it's, it's too bad most of that's gone. You had Foster Center, Foster School. And Foster School, we had Bo Price. So he had uh, the drum corps, the band. It was really nice. Um, there's, there was so much going on in, in that ward. And then I moved to the second ward. I remember Mr. Drummond. He was the um, drummer. He was the, the alderman at the time. And he was really good about going out and meeting people and, and staying close to his constituents. Real. So I, I, I used to work when I was in high school. I worked at Dr. Spencer's office right there on um, what is that, Hartree and Dempster, right in there where, the, where now they're building um, lofts. That used to be him and Dr. Reynolds was the, de the dentist at the time. So now it's the areas changed and times change thing. So, you know, I, I'm, i let me see what else. Is there anything else you wanna know that I didn't tell you about? Well, um, so I'm a mom, I'm a teacher. I'm really passionate about the things that I do. I'm really passionate about my students and making sure that they, they get an education. School has changed so much from even when I attended school with the things that teachers have to deal with. And I think it's important for, for me to have a relationship with, with my parents and students. And I would like the same thing with, with my children. I have eight of those little people, um, grandchildren. I love them so much and I do all I can to help them and my students as well. Um, I'm like I said, I'm very passionate about the ward and where I live. I know that um, I had a couple people say something about me not having political backing, right? And I'm like, well, I understand that's very important. I do understand that. However, you have a ward full of people, and some people can vote and some people can't. But that doesn't mean that their voice can't be heard. You know, that doesn't mean that that we just not consider them. So I'm I'm like this. We agree to disagree, but come to some consensus, you know, and some happy medium there so that we can move on, not just leave it. We agree, disagree, and leave, but you know, actually have a conversation. And so I'm I'm that person. I like to listen. Um, I like to be around people that don't always agree with me. So then that helps me to make a better decision about the things that I need to do. So that's me in a, in a nutshell. I'm sorry if I- No, that was great. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, first question. Uh, okay. Uh, how well do you feel the city of Evanston has upheld its goal of assessing decisions and policies through a lens of equity? 
several years ago, Evanston became the first city in the nation to pass reparations. The program has recently been criticized for the slow pace of the payouts. How do you feel this program can be improved? Uh, in in uh, uh, November, well, here let's let's start let's start there. There's multi part to this. Um, the next three questions will be focused on equity, but I think that's a good place um, to start. Okay, well, I just think not just the city of Evanston, but throughout the country, we struggle with equity, especially when it comes to African Americans, um, because we have historically been taught to kind of minimize who we are and what we do. And then, you know, other ethnic groups come along and it's like, okay, we always push to the sides. I think now that it's been brought to the forefront, I think that, you know, with some of the, some of the um, things that are, are being set in place and just starting to have that courageous conversation with, with the city um, and the workers that little, you know, that what do you, I don't even know what to call it because it's so, every time you turn around, it's always the same thing, but pushing through that, I think that's gonna be really important for the city, just for them to even acknowledge that, that it's been an issue, I think is huge. So I, I don't want them to stop there though. I want them to continue on and, and push through whatever it is, because I'm gonna tell you something at the end of the day, okay? Color does not matter to me. That's how I feel. I feel like I'm human. We say we have integration. We say that we're fair. Then, you know, I'm the person to say, okay, well, but this is fair and we have to make it fair. It's important to have that. And in, in, in education, the field of education, that's a huge thing as well. Equity. We talk about it now. I hear it throughout the city and throughout every facet of profession. We talk about equity. So I really, as far as the city and the employees, I'm really glad that it, we, they finally came to a point where they can have that conversation and hopefully push through everything that's kind of stopping them and, and all those, you know, hard bumps that you that you come up against. Thank you. Um, in November of last year, uh, a letter was published by a group of city employees that highlighted systemic racism and discrimination in city government. What would you do if you were elected to address this issue? Okay, so what I the first thing I would do is try to figure out where things stand. You know, like I, I would talk to the workers to see what 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 were the real issues, the clear issues, because you know, they're not gonna come out and say it's this, 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 and this, and then try to bridge that gap between the, the city and the workers, sit down and have a conversation, like I said earlier, about the issues and what we need to do to move forward. And if we can agree to move forward and not stop and not say, well, you know what, maybe maybe that's not for this time. I, I'm really tired of hearing that. That's not for this time. And, and maybe we can place it. No, it is for this time. And what do we need to do? Who, do we, who else do we need to come in and help us with this situation to, to move it forward. So everybody here can feel comfortable with how, you know, what, what's going on. I think that's important. Wonderful, thank you. Um, so the, the, the same letter uh, alleging racism in, in city government included an action plan for the city. Uh, which of the recommended action items would you like to see implemented? And which, if any, do you disagree with? Okay, well, I'm just going to be really honest with you. I don't know that about that piece. That part I don't know about. But what I do know is that everybody that comes together in 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 that group needs to come to some type of agreement um, on the issues. I think it should be taken apart piece by piece in order for it to work. Because if you leave one piece out without the other, it's not going to work and somebody's not going to be happy. And then you're going to have a squeaky wheel saying, oh, Evanston is this and Evanston is that, and they're still racist and they're still that. I, I rather see them come together and pick apart and say, okay, let's deal with this issue, agree to disagree and come back to it um, and, and, and move forward but coming back to make sure that everybody agrees with what's going on. So people don't 
um, you know, you don't hear in the wind, oh, she's a sellout or she just, or she's doing that. You know, we, we have to sit down and you have to be honest with your feelings and not have it be where everybody's like yelling and, and being combative. You have to be able to, to listen. And, and sometimes I feel like that's hard because every man is right in his own eye. You know, and so it's like, no, I'm looking at it through this lens and this is what I see. And you have someone else in the same group and saying, no, but it's not that it's this and it's, and you can never move forward. So I, I'd like to see whatever those pieces are being looked at with a clear lens. And if they need help, have people come in that are professional and have really know how to deal with this and not just somebody, you know, Oh, I'm black, so I'm coming in and I'm gonna I'm gonna help everybody and we're gonna do it this way. And you guys have to listen to me. No, everybody needs to be heard because this is very important. Yeah, thank you. All right, so this next next uh, question is in two parts. Um, so the first part, despite the number of new residential units constructed in Evanston over the last few years, especially in high-rise developments approved by the city council, housing costs in Evanston continue to rise. Do you feel that the inclusionary housing ordinance is doing enough to combat this? And what solutions would you like to see implemented? Okay, so can we go back? I want to answer it bit by bit. Okay, yeah. so with the, with the high rises being built, right, but the cost of living is still going high. I think that um, we have to do a better job at addressing that because we talk about affordable housing and, and what people don't understand is that it's just not low income housing, okay? You have some really uh, high middle class people that cannot afford to live here anymore. And I think that's what we need a program that can be tailored to every person's individual need. You, you know what I mean? Because if things keep happening um, I don't think e Evanston is, is not going to be Evanston anymore, you know, so I think that it's, it's important to look at that piece and, 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 and go back and say, hey, look, all right, we, we're building these high rises, um, we need to make it more affordable, we need to start looking at, at income um, for every level and what should this be priced at and and stop that, you know, having people come in and build these big high rises and then charge astronomical prices. Because after a while, people are not going to be able to afford to live here and they're going to move out. And then what's going to happen to all those high rises? Can we look towards the future in order to deal with the present? That's that's what I think as far as that. Part. Thank you. Um, even though it's not in the second ward, uh, there's been contentious discussion around the use of the Margarita Inn as a residence for unhoused individuals. What do you feel could be done to assuage the concerns of local residents while still providing service to our city's most vulnerable population? Okay, so we know the um, connections for homeless is kind of running that, right? I sat at a meeting there, all right, um, back in August, and I listened to everyone there, a part of the program, and what they they said that their program does, and it all sounded really nice and really good. However, you know, I let them know that there's a breakdown there. And some people who really need housing, like people with children that really need housing, they don't get it because they, they can't advocate for themselves. And they're pushed away at the door. And I know this because I tried to help someone and the person at the desk was very rude. And I told them that. I said, and, and, and the person never got any help at all and continue to be homeless. And I watch people. I think that um, the program needs to work for everybody. And every facet of that program, they have, they have counseling, they have um, like a drug rehabilitation program in that they need to go back and they need to make sure that those residents that are there are getting everything that they need from that program. So if you have a resident that has mental health issues, okay, then you need to address that person, tailor some type of program for that person in mental health and really help that person. Because 
ultimately these people have to you you have them in an area where they live they're living with other people and children and and they're affected by the way that these people act so your program has to work it just can't you just can't put people places that have maybe um substance abuse or mental illness or whatever and then just say okay you guys just live here and with with no kind of help and really help not just help the squeaky wheels or help people that you want to help you have to help everybody that you have there i i don't i don't i don't think for one second the residents would mind if the program was really working for those people you know everybody needs a place to stay i understand that however if you have a program and you're saying that your program can address these needs for these people well where's the breakdown because it's not happening so that's what i i i think basically all right thank you all right <clears throat> The Inflation Reduction Act, signed into law by President Biden, <clears throat> includes grants for helping low-income citizens get environmental upgrades to housing. This includes some vital infrastructure improvements like lead pipe abatement and environmental upgrades like solar panel installation, among a couple, a couple other things. Unfortunately, not many people know that these are available to them. What can the city do to help citizens access these benefits? Well, what I think is they need to knock on doors, they need to put out flyers. Not everybody has access like to computers. Um, when I went knocking on doors, a lot of people didn't know. There was, um, I don't know if you, when you probably do, um, Alderman Reed had put forth um, a proposal to have the parks close at 10 o'clock, but be open to people who wanted to walk through. And um, I watched that. So somebody said, oh, everybody in Evanston knows that. And I was sitting there watching this, thinking to myself, well, I don't think so, because I just heard about it, right? So I live on Fowler, like a block over from McDaniel in the big park there. So I just canvassed that little area. Nobody really knew about it. I just, like three or four people um, said, well, no, I don't think so, but it could possibly work. But everybody else said, if it's not broke, don't fix it, leave it because it could cause contention. So I think that you have to think outside of the box. I know that they have ward meetings, they have um, newsletters, but not everybody gets that. So I, you know, I know they have block clubs, but not every neighborhood has a block club. So I think it's important for the order person to know the ward, I mean, really know the ward, know who they can connect with to make sure that that gets out. Even if that means I go to your neighborhood, knock on your doors and say on Saturday, I'm gonna be out and I'm out here on the block and I wanna talk to you guys about some solar energy stuff that, that we have available and that you have available to you. And, and, and really, and, and that takes a lot. The second ward, it's huge. And I know I've been out there since November. Okay. So it is huge. And so I, I, but I also am really compassionate about people knowing what's going on and having a say. I, I, that, that, that's really important to me. So with this solar panel stuff and any, any kind of information that comes through the city, I think it's important for the older person to have point people that they can get information out. And then if there's somebody that didn't get it, oh, did you go visit so-and-so and -and make sure that this um, resident got it? Because you have a a ward map, right? And you have a voter's map and has everybody's address on it. You just can do a little checklist and say, okay, and make sure that the people get it. That's important. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right. Uh, Do you feel overall that expenditures by the city of Evanston over the last four years have appropriately reflected the priorities, needs, and interests of Evanston residents. Okay, I'm not too sure about all that. You know, we can all, I mean, you can say yes, and you can say no, and you can say, well, maybe, and I'm I'm in the well, maybe, because, you know, it, it does um, cater to different groups, right? And so I just think that at the end of the day, I think expenditures should be more open so people know. And um, a lot of things that people don't know and don't understand need to be made clear. And um, you got to be honest. 
at the end of the day. You just got to be honest with what's going on. And if you're not honest, then we need to make you accountable. You know? Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, the Evanston City Council has allocated $3 million of American Rescue Plan Act funds to be dispersed through a participatory budgeting process. How do you feel the process has gone so far? And what can the city do to get more people involved in the process? Okay, so the little bit I know about it is that um, people are kind of riping back and forth with it. Um, there's a couple organizations that feel like, you know, um, they should get it, or get, get some of the money and have some of the say. So it's like back and forth. I think that it should be tabled and um, really thought well thought out as to where it's going to go and where it's going to where we need, the most need is. That's that's what I think. Um, I just I, I it's so funny because I was just talking to someone about it today and um, like one group was going to have a, a meeting about it to talk about what they wanted. But then the snowstorm came and they weren't able to do it. And so what I don't want to see is what Evanston usually does is, is just, you know, it just goes away and then some people come up and, and say, no, that money should be used for this and no, the money should be used for that. But I think that um, it should be a way in on what should happen with the money. We should It should be a, a honest conversation about where the most need is for the money and then then talk about, you know, dispersing it. That's, that's what I think. I think the things should, our, our wards are so different and so needy in, in neighborhoods. It's not even the whole ward sometimes because it's like economically situated where you have a high end here, low end there. So whenever you try to make those kind of sorts of decisions, it's not always fair. So I think that it would be just nice to have representation from all groups and sit down and really have a, a, a good, honest discussion about where the money should go. Wonderful, thank you. Even before the pandemic, <clears throat> it seemed as though downtown Evanston was full of empty storefronts. What do you believe can be done to promote development in a way that prioritizes small businesses and local ownership? I think a lot has to do with um, the way that the businesses, um, I'm sorry, I had a loss for word now the way that 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 businesses promote themselves i think that needs to be looked at because i know that um what's that taco bell used to be downtown and then it left i'm like oh my god I'm, so i think that um we should look at what evanston really needs and maybe even do a little survey of of people to find out what they would like to come back because when I went downtown Evanston, I used to always take my my children to Barnes and Nobles and it's gone. And I'm like, okay, I understand we need more medical um, sites, but this is a little ridiculous, you know? So I, I, I really think that I, I talked to a couple businesses down there, business owners that left and some that are still there that said that the, the rent hike and that it was COVID and, but I noticed like you say, that even before that businesses were leaving. So I think we need to find out what happened. I think we need to find out what the needs are for the the the, the, the city. You know, like, do we need more eat places? Do we need, and how, how do we keep what we have? What's working, what's not? Um, but really businesses, I think they need to promote themselves and, and, and do more, and I don't know why I'm just, maybe I, I'm nervous, but, <laughs> and I am, um, it's, it's hard for me now to like think of words after being at work, being up since four o'clock this morning, but no excuses. Um, they have to advertise. That's the word I wanted. They have to be able to advertise and promote their business and say, you know, like, this is what we have. I remember Litton's. Do you remember Litton's? Okay. And Marshall Fields. And so we need we need that. We had the gap. I was happy about that, but then it left. So, and that was way before the pandemic. So I think it's like um, really important to see what the needs are of the people and then get people to advertise their business more and, and, and promote it. And 
I know that sometimes for for um, restaurants, the PTAs put get get um, promote different restaurants, small small business small businesses in the, in the area. So, you know, get more, get, you know, we, we, we just have to promote ourselves and we, we have to be involved and say, okay, so this store looks like it's going out of business. I just talked to the, the owner and it's because maybe they're not being patronized enough. So let's, let's go down there and start buying. Wonderful. Thank you. All right. Uh, last two. Um, Northwestern is a big part of the Evanston community. How would you make sure that the city's relationship with the university adds value to the lives of your constituents? Wow, that's a big question for me. Um, I think, well, I know that a lot of Northwestern students come to our school and, and help do things, especially in like PE. They also tutor a lot. Um, I think it would be nice to maybe have a day where we have um, Northwestern students come over into a ward. We have a nice big block party and, and then have them help maybe volunteer in, the, in, in our wards to, to do different things. That would, I think that would kind of bring us together. Um, just try to, to do more, have more events together. You know, I know that um, one year for Halloween, Northwestern had a, a big Halloween thing for little kids and and downtown Evanston had something and it was just really, really nice. I don't remember having anything since, but I thought that was really nice, you know. So, yeah, having more events centered around the wards and then having having the the um, council members come back and say, hey, you know what, I have these students coming out and they're doing this and they're helping um, our high school students and our wards do this and that and the third, you know. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Northwestern is planning on rebuilding their football stadium. Are you in favor of the plan they've submitted? If not, what changes would you like to see them make? And how would you like them to get, how would you get them to change their plan? Okay, so I'm a person, I like change, okay? And I, and I, I welcome it. I, and if I don't like it, like I said, I welcome it. Um, I'm neither here nor there on, on, the, on the Ryan's Field. I did read, read a lot about it. What I did do too on my own is I went through and I um, talked to residents there, just 10. So it's not like I canvassed the whole area, just to see how they felt. The biggest concern was the parking. You know, they it's it, it would be a nightmare. Are they going to allocate parking for to um, suffice the stadium and not have people park in other people's parking lot? Because you know you have that building over there, those those apartments over there, and then people park. And like for me, I like to park in front of my house. I really do. So you know, if I come out and I can't park in front of my house, that's a problem. So you know, and that might be small and minute. But it means a lot to be able to to do that. So, you know, I I'm neither here nor there with it. I I know that I think it said in 2030 or 2033 is gonna how much revenue is gonna burst. But then, what's gonna happen in between that? You know, how what what is it gonna look like? I think that um, more residents that not that they should table it. Okay, but I think they should listen to the voices of the residents around in that area. That's what I, I, I really do, because it's going to affect them more than it's going to affect me. Yeah. Well, wonderful. That's that's all I've got. Um, you know, uh, Pat, thank you so much for uh, your time tonight. We'll post the video uh, and uh, uh, yeah, we will, you know, please. Uh, pass it around to, to people, make sure that, that uh, they get the chance to see it. And we'll, we'll, hopefully we'll see you. Um, we'll send out a notification for where we're having our uh, mixer uh, at, at the end of the voting week. And we hope to see you there. You will.